Okay, so we're checking out the only game where you can simulate a man's torturous struggle where he stands in line for an infinite amount of time so that he can eventually buy one single roll of toilet paper. It's another brick in the mall. More torturous shopping, damn it! Another brick in the mall is one of those games that allows you to take what should be a fun time and turn it into a hell-like torture session. So today, I want to see exactly how long I can force people to walk in order to buy a roll of toilet paper. I'm kind of curious if anyone will actually make it to the end of my death maze or if they'll just give up. I will absolutely have massive shoplifting. If those bastards can make it, you know what? They can have it. You know what? I'll give them a couple of extras. I'll put a liquor store in there too because quite honestly, they deserve it. Gotta have the black market organs as well because by the end of it, your heart is probably going to fail you. Welcome everyone to the beginning of hell. I shouldn't say that. There's nothing here yet. It's like having the underworld without any layers. Some people might ask me how many builders I need? The answer is yes. Honestly, we're not really going to need much besides builders and maybe a janitor or two. I don't even know if I feel it like clean in the place. There's only gonna be one store after all. <laughs> There we go, we'll start out with 150 people with no real reason to live. See, we're contributing to the job market. Before everyone arrives, the game always starts with one single construction person. This lady over here is like, you want me to do what? Kill me. That's right, my little Satan bees. Go forth. That's what I'm talking about. It's an army of people with very little to live for. How many foundations? All of them. I just realized that I'm torturing people without even really meaning to. I could have started them over here, but instead I'm making everyone walk a mile in order to, like, just lay down the very first brick. From now on, your starting hour is midnight. You work for 15 hours. Welcome to your home away from home, everyone. Get your asses out there. Okay, the beginning of my hideous tumor has started. You can actually see the uh, mall cancer spreading from the right over here. All right, we're on day five so far of the torture cube. I mean, Rome wasn't built in a day. Neither was the pits of hell. I'm interested why my crew decided to put together an X-Acto knife in the build area. It's like looking at a cloud and seeing something. I look at this and I see the blade that will puncture the innocence of all those who want to buy something mundane. I appreciate that even moving in a straight line, people can't leave until about six hours after their shift is over. I'm gonna turn this into one gigantic maze. No one gets to see their family until this is done. Come on, you scrubs. We can actually make this a little bit bigger. I wouldn't want to skimp out on the torture after all. And on the 11th day, the throne of pain was finally complete. Okay, I'm gonna start with the store because honestly, we can always make it bigger or smaller. I'm not a monster. It's gonna be, it's gonna have plenty of toilet paper that people can buy if they can survive getting there. Make it about this big. I right, just gotta start putting down some shelving over here. All right, the start is looking pretty good. I got most of my shelves up here. Health and beauty, toilet paper. Should probably rename this store of eternal suffering. <laughs> so yeah, it's just big enough for the name. All right, need a little area over here for storage. Got plenty of toilet paper to put out after all. All right, the store is going to be open 24 hours a day. I wouldn't want anyone going home. A few stalkers, a couple of cashiers, and boom, before you know it, the store of eternal suffering is open for business. Always make sure to save often. All right, now this first area of the maze is actually going to be pretty big because I want people to think that they may legitimately end up with a roll of toilet paper when they leave here. Oh my God, this is going to take forever. I need more builders. I'm gonna have to put doors here so that the builders can actually get this done in a timely manner. <laughs> Otherwise, they're gonna have to go through this goddamn maze as well. Come on, boys, you could do it. It's like peeling an onion, only in reverse and with a lot more tears. You've already made something wonderful happen. None of the employees ever get to go home because they get stuck inside the maze and the maze hasn't even really started yet. I want to make sure there's cashiers here at all times. Don't mind the rats, just keep doing your damn jobs. All right, finally the toilet paper is starting to come in. Have you ever seen anything so glorious? <laughs> <laughs> We've got two different flavors, soft and sandpaper. If you're early, you won't have to scrape your anus away. All right, I want to start people being impressed with the mall. So we need fixtures in the beginning here, at least until they get stuck in the maze. Ah, here we go. Some plants, water, 
Some random sofas. Plenty of ATMs. You know what? We'll even give them the red tiles. It's not carpet, it's blood. I'm gonna make a bunch of doors just for the staff so they can actually stock this place. Don't get me wrong. I do want to torture them too, but I have to, you know, actually have products to lure people in with. Ah, the gauntlet of rats is growing. Excellent. We have our very first customer. How far is this person actually willing to go, I wonder? Okay, she came in looking for toilet paper, but she had to go home. She's sickened by the filth. Guess this means I should legitimately take care of all the rats. So many rat lives are ending right now. I actually had to hire a janitor to clean up all the feces, otherwise we're not gonna be able to keep people in here. Just putting out some marketing for the uh, store of eternal suffering. Almost all the toilet paper's out. These poor guys literally just put the hammer to rats 24 hours a day. They never get to go home. Okay. We've got another customer right now. She's been in the store so far for three and a half hours. Again, the problem is she's probably going to eventually see all the rats and leap. But once we get done with the rat problem, right? Yeah, she, she immediately vomited. On the plus side, it's taken her six hours to buy absolutely nothing. I'm sorry, scratch that. It's taken her nine hours to buy nothing. Okay, we've got a new world record right now. This one customer has been inside of the store so far for over 12 hours. I think it's true. I don't think he's gonna give up. Okay, he's done it. This is our first guy. It's taken him almost 24 hours, but he's finally buying the toilet paper. Okay, he's done it. He's paying for the toilet paper. He's got it. Took him about 20 hours. Oh my God, he still has to go around one more time. Okay, I gotta put like a maintenance center down here because I need to constantly fight against these rats. I get like 90 a hundred of them. As many builders as I can afford as well. Well, actually, it's not about affording. We're basically just printing money here. Welcome to the government of eternal suffering. Okay, so it's taken a customer about two days to buy something so far, and our onion is not even close to being done yet. There's our legion of janitors. Nice. All right, let's keep the walls going. Now is the part where I have to ask myself just how much masochism can I take of building these you learn to enjoy the pain. It's a lot like a hot pepper. All right, they're doing it good. They're bi they're building it almost as fast as I can make it. I want to see if I can keep a human being inside of this mall for over a week in order to buy a roll of toilet paper. I need to keep making staff doors so I don't want to shoot myself in the face. God, I need friggin' staff doors at every angle. I'm not gonna lie, I think we may go way past keeping a person here for a full week. I've been building these layers and I still can't even see the store. The only good part is that having to drag this crap is shorter because I'm slowly working my way inward. Put some more doors down so that my staff doesn't commit seppuku. Okay, we're about, um, I don't know, a third of the way in. I think it's time to put down maybe some beer or something in here. Ah, uh, this, this is a logistical error. I'm gonna have to move these areas. Actually, never mind. Whoever checks out here could just friggin' deal with it. Vodka, nice. Had the wrong shelf for the vodka, but that's okay. We can still make this work. There we go, perfect. Beverages, vodka, got it. This store is really turning out quite nice. More walls of pain. I think the thing that really blows me away is that there's 45 people willing to do this. God, it's like trekking through the friggin' Himalayas. They're like, I'll do anything so my ass can be pampered. Maybe I'll even put a Starbucks in here for them. It's like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Okay, uh, we're still not quite halfway there, but we're getting there. Again, always make sure to save often. God, it's taking so long. But finally, when I go across, I can actually see the top of the storage area now. I want people to be in this mall for so goddamn long that by the time they get done, their children are grown up. The husband comes back. He's got like a 30 foot long beard. His wife is like, where have you been? He's like, getting toilet paper. What year is it? Oh God, just putting down items is starting to lag the whole game. <laughs> Look at this horror. Look at what people are forced to do just to get anywhere. I've got all these doors for my staff and they just, they just don't want to use them. They'd rather live a life of suffering in hell. You can see there's one solitary bastard that's putting together the rest of these walls. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm almost done, which is good because I'm starting to think that maybe the game can't handle many more walls. All right, hold on. We're, we're kind of cornered a little bit, but I, I want to make this as long as humanly possible. God, none of my staff can even get here. I got to put more doors in. God, they're catching up with me. I'm trying to outrun them. Oh, this is, this is just painful. We can't half-ass this though. We got to go all the way. Okay, we're just getting that 
last little bit of agony in. You never want to skimp on the agony. Oh my God, I'm starting to get artifacting in the game. <laughs> okay, it's almost done. These last little pieces, and then we can calculate just how long it takes someone to go through the entire thing, buy the toilet paper, and then get home. I never thought I would say this, but apparently I need more parking spaces. What is wrong with you people? I can't believe that the customers are filling up all my parking spots. Why would any of you want to do this to yourself? Okay. The time has come. We will follow Kim Chen. She's 19. She'll probably be 30 by the time she gets done. On the plus side, she's got a ton of patience. Okay, so she got in at three on day 50. We actually need to measure this by the days because it's gonna be a lot longer than 24 hours. Here we go. I don't actually know what happens when her bladder finally fails because there's no way in hell that she's gonna make it to the toilet paper before her bladder gives up. She's a smoker too. This is a fantastic time to quit. You notice she's very fast. Okay, she's effectively starving at this point. This is so relevant. It says that hungry customers will go home if there's no restaurants, but she is not going home. She wants that toilet paper. Okay, her bladder is now full. She's a really good one to use for this because you can see it's like racehorses. She's faster than everyone else. You have to run the marathon to get the toilet paper all around here. Look at this poor old guy. Look at how slow he is. It's gonna take him like three times as long as what it takes her. Okay, we're already past 24 hours at this point, and she's only on level three. We're now passing 36 hours. She's actually like lapping someone now, someone that probably got here two days before her. So we are now past two days. It may look like she got somewhere. This is how much further she still has to go. We are now five days in. This is how far she's got. She's got about four times as much to go. Understand, that's just to get the toilet paper. She has to leave the mall afterward. Can you imagine getting in there and someone has bought the last roll? That's legitimately grounds for killing someone. Kim Chen has now been traveling for seven days through the barren wasteland of eternal suffering. On the 10th day of suffering, Kim Chen said to me, I just want some goddamn TP. Okay, she's getting pretty close. I mean, realistically, she probably only has like another day or two to get there. Come on, Kim. You can do it. You're so close. You're almost at the vertical areas. Don't give up now. It is gonna take over 12 days. Finally, it has taken Kim 12 and a half days to just reach the store to buy something. <laughs> well done, Kim. Yeah, go ahead and treat yourself. Maybe grab a drink too while you're at it. <laughs> so Kim is super fast. We'll say she power walks at five miles an hour. It took her 12 and a half days just to get in the store. That means that she just walked 1,500 miles just to get her toilet paper home. She has to walk a total of 3,000 miles and it takes almost a month. Well, I think we've accurately represented a very realistic plight. Would you walk 3,000 miles for a roll of toilet paper? I'm gonna go let her walk home for like another two hours in real time. Anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed this episode of No Brick and Wall. Until the next time, stay foxy and much love.